Hello everyone. Yes, we are here for another RPG Afternoons with Xenogears. Let me make sure we are actually streaming. Audio check. All right, sounds good. If it does not sound good on your end, do let me know. There's stream elements. Lord Orphew has arrived, casting RPG Afternoons with Xenogears. So hello, everyone. Ah. I'm looking forward to continuing the game today. General Organa is here. Hello, General Organa. And Creepy is here as well, saying butts. Hello, Creepy. I hope your, your butts are doing well. And thank you for shouting out General Organa. Also, shout out to Creepy. And Creepy has redeemed Hydrate very well. And Creepy has redeemed Hello. I'm new to stream. Well, welcome to our stream, Creepy, for the very first time. Again. And cheers. Your butt is cracked. You need a new one? No, just rub some ointment in there. You'll be fine. <sighs> well, before we continue, as usual, we'll go through our opening announcements. Oh, I just ran out. To allow our other viewers the opportunity to join us for the day's show. So... I am your host, Lord Orfeo. I stream five days a week. And I stream a little something different each and every day of the week. As I know, not every game is for every person, or every game genre is for every person. So I try to appeal to more people by streaming a little something different throughout the week. Also, let me load this up. There we go. Um, also, I find it helps me from getting burnt out on any one game or game genre. So, to that end, I have created various stream themes. Mondays, we have what is known as Monday Marvels. We can stream any game from any genre, but no horror, no role-playing games. Those uh, genres have their own stream days. We also have, uh, let's see here. Oh, also the game cannot be part of a series. It must be unique. Typically, that means it's going to be an indie game, but not always. Tuesdays, I take off. Um, that's more of a personal me day. Wednesdays, uh, in the Discord, we have Anime Afternoons. We watch two episodes from a given series. And then afterwards on Twitch, we have our weekly just chatting stream, community chat, and gaming news. Uh, we go over community updates, gaming news, and game releases for the week. Thursdays are our RPG Afternoons, which is what we're having today, which focuses on role-playing games. If you like RPGs, today is your day. Franchise Fridays follows. Um, similar to Mondays, we can stream any game from any genre, but it must be part of a larger series, hence the name Franchise Fridays. Uh, usually... That means we're going to be streaming the, the larger AAA blockbuster games on Friday. Not always, but most of the time. Uh, following that, we have Spooky Saturdays. Spooky Saturdays, that's our stream day for horror and just general creepiness. And then Sundays, I take off as well. That's more of a, a family and friends day. So if any of those stream things are of interest to you, then I encourage you to throw me a follow, and I hope to see you sometime during the week. And with our opening announcements now out of the way, let us return to the stream of the day. So again, we are here for RPG Afternoons, and this is Xenogears from Squaresoft. 
This is a JRPG from Sony's original PlayStation, and it's supposed to be one of the greatest RPGs of all time. When last we were playing this, or I guess during our last stream session, I'll kind of go over what we went through. We were trapped beneath the desert sands with a pirate and his gear called the Brigandier. And we had our gear as well, well tall. And um, in a stalactite cavern, it took us about four hours to get out. I was told later on that segment should have taken us like 40 minutes. But I mean, I'm me. I, I take a long time in games. Um, so we did get out and um, we boarded the uh, pirate's sand ship. And he took us to his base, a secret pirate base called Bart's Lair. And uh, that's where he concluded. So a couple things happened. Uh, I did say I was going to do some grinding, and I did. Uh, I started grinding off stream, because I think it might bore some people to just watch that. Uh, on, what's today? Today's Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday. On Tuesday. And I had an accident where... I didn't erase the save file, but I started grinding for three hours, and I gained some cool stuff. I bought some stuff from up some upgrades for the mech for the gear, and I started to go through my personal character inventory and re try to rearrange stuff. And it looked like stuff in my inventory was disappearing, so I didn't know what was going on. So I just reloaded my last save file. Unfortunately, I hadn't saved in the three hours I had been grinding, so I lost all that progress. That was that was kind of a bummer. So I did more grinding last night, and I tried, I put in, I think it was like either four or five hours last night, and I did not grind out all the gold that I wanted to. So I wanted to get at least one item for the gear from the ship, um... And then have some extra gold saved over to purchase any personal upgrades that I might want to get. But I was just earning too little gold in too short a period of time. Um, I feel like I probably should have been trying to grind maybe like two or three hours a night every night. I just didn't know it would take that long to grind gold in this game at where we're at. And so we're just going to roll with it. We're just going to jump in. We're going to go with the story. Um... We are at Bart's base. We are supposed to follow what looks to be Bart's butler, along with Dr. Seaton, into the cafe area to have some tea. And then we'll see where we go from there. Uh, the butler guy is also the one who was in control of the store for personal items. So we will see what's going on with that. Also, I'll also show you the upgrades that I bought for the mechs. And uh, then we'll just continue on with the story. So let's load in. The Pirate's Lair. You can see we're level 29. Last Thursday, we left off at character level 20. And I think we're like 17 hours in. You can see we're like 22 hours in. So what is it? 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. It's five hours. So yeah, I did five hours worth of grinding and I gained nine levels. So let's load on in. And uh, a friend of mine named Wipeout told me that the characters do not scale in terms of your level. So, going forward, the game might be a little bit easier on us, considering, you know, we're not supposed to be nine levels stronger than we are. Um, one moment, let me burb real quick. I thought I turned the fan over my head off, because it's a bit chilly in here, and apparently I turned it on high. So, I'm not even going to mute the mic. I'm literally just standing up, it's right above my head. I'm gonna try not to yank the mic out of the computer again. <laughs> Sometimes I forget that I have it connected to my shirt. Okay, there we go. Alright. Even part of the cable there. Alrighty. Let me get back to stream shot here.
What is that creepy? Also, you have an ad. Remember me? Belches a gout of fire. Inertia drift. I don't understand those references. Oh, ADD. I got you. <laughs> no! Don't climb the ladder. The animation and the coloring of parts of this game, particularly um, Faye's pants and his shoes, remind me a little of the artwork of Don Bluff. Who, if you don't know who Don Bluff is, he did some of the art. Well, he didn't do some of the, He did a lot of the art. Or, um... What was it? All Dogs Go to Heaven. Um, in addition to... Um, Space Ace and the Dragon's Lair Trilogy. And he's done other things as well. Um, I want to say he also did The Secret of Nim. I think the, I know I'm pretty sure the first one. I don't know about the second one. They did the first one. So he has a very unique animation style, and I do mean that in a good way. Uh, and this kind of, at least just the pants, the coloring, the shading on the pants and the shoes, does remind me of his art. So right now we're not going to the cafe. Right now, I am showing you the upgrades I made. I went the wrong way. I'm going to show you the upgrades I made to the mech. Uh, I could just show you that from my gear menu, but you'd only see the changes I made to my mech and not to the Brigandier. So that's why I'm going down to the uh, the hold within the sand submarine so you can see uh, the changes I made to Brigandier as well. But to do that, I have to come all the way down here and go to the, uh, the gear shop. Attention deficit. Initial D. Yes. We've been watching Initial D for Anime Afternoons. It is a very good show. It's getting better. Or at least I'm getting more interested in it uh, the further in we get. Don Bluff. Yes, Don Bluff. And Brandon is here. Hello, Brandon. How are you doing today? Hey, Orpheon Chat. How's everyone doing? Doing well, Brandon. Doing well. We are here for RPG Afternoons. And we are continuing our playthrough of Xeno Gears. We'll see how much further we get today. I have maybe about a third of a cup of coffee left, but I have like quite a few more in the pot. So probably gonna be here for a good chunk of time. How about you, Brandon? And thank you for shouting out, Brandon. Creepy. And Zetman is here. Orpheo Gears, yes. Welcome, Zetman. Welcome. How are you doing? Oh, Zetman's been playing some God of War Ragnarok. Cool. And Brandon has been on Borderlands 3. Yes, have you played this game, Zetman? Okay, so here's the uh, the tuning jobs I've been doing on Welltall and Brigandier. So they're both at full fuel. Um... For our engine, Welltall was already upgraded previously. We bought, I think we bought the upgrades from Old Man Ball. Uh, frame, we bought that from him as well. Um, I think we upgraded our armor as well from there. Um, for the Brigandier, we did upgrade our engine. We had like a G6-1200, I upgraded that to the Z9-1500. Uh, we can't upgrade the frame. It only sells the well tall frame. Uh, I did upgrade the armor. We had an MS-6, so I gave it an MS-9. So those are the upgrades we made. Also, I bought a new weapon, or I acquired a new weapon, um, for the Brigandier, but I cannot equip it yet. I have to wait till I have um, Brigandier, or at least um, Bart, back in my party in order to gain access to his gear to equip the stronger whip weapon. So if I go out, and I go to buy, and I go to weapons, 
You can see it says Iron Whip stored zero. The reason it says stored zero is because it's currently equipped. Actually, you can kind of see that in the bottom right-hand corner. You can see the picture of Bart and it has an E there, showing that it's equipped. For more money, though, we can buy the Snapper G Whip. I guess that's like a Snapper Gear Whip. Um, it says stored one. You can only equip one weapon on your, your gear. Um, at least right now, I don't know, maybe as you continue to level the gears up, maybe you can equip two later on, I don't know. But for now, you can only equip one. Um, but again, I can't equip it until um, I have control of his mech again. You can see that it's going to raise uh, the Brigandier's attack by two points. As far as what else I've done, I haven't purchased any new parts for the Brigandier. And that's kind of because... I don't know how long the Brigandier is going to be with us. Characters seem to kind of drop in and out uh, of our party, and so I don't really want to make... I don't really want to commit too much to upgrading the Brigandier, or commit too much to even upgrading uh, Bart, unless we just have the spare money and we're in the moment. Um, I did, though, buy more parts for Weltall. Um, you can see I have like 8,000 gold. I can pretty much afford anything here. I just don't know what to get right now. Um, but one thing I did get and equip, I have three magnetic coatings. So someone told me, I think it was White, but I think he did the research, uh, that both the response circuit for 2,500 and the magnetic coating for 4,000 increases response time. But the magnetic coating was supposed to have a detriment to it. It was supposed to slow the agility of your gear by, I think it was like one point. And what that basically means is with the magnetic coatings, you have more response time, which means you're better at dodging enemy attacks. But the lower your agility is, that means the slower your ATB gauge fills, or the, the longer it takes until you can initiate another combat action. And I don't like that. But I started to equip the magnetic coatings, and I was paying attention to agility on my gear, and it never changed. So it doesn't seem like magnetic coating has any detriment. The only detriment is that it costs 4,000 gold, as opposed to the 2,500 of these, the circuit. So I just bought three and equipped three. I mean, there's other items I can buy, but none of them give me as big a boost uh, to any of my stats as uh, the magnetic coating does. Now, to be fair, um, I don't know if all stats are weighed equally. So in other words, if I boost attack, let, let's go with defense, because that's kind of easier. Let's go with armor. If I boost armor by five points, I don't know if that translates into five less damage taken. That could mean, uh, it's probably evolved in some sort of formula. Uh, it could mean something like you took, um, Maybe 50 less damage, maybe it means 5% less damage, like, I don't really know what that means. As far as uh, reaction time, or response time as it's called, which is basically evasion, um, for your gear, I don't know um, if, that, if that high number really translates into a ton of evasion, or if that translates into a little bit of evasion. But I'm going off the assumption that all stats are weighed equally. That may not be the case, but just looking at the numbers, that's kind of what I'm going off of. So now I'm taking us back up to where the cafe is. Well, actually, there's also something I wanted to try before we go into the cafe. I saw this earlier while I was grinding, and I didn't approach it because... I didn't, uh, I didn't want to trigger anything. But we'll do that real quick before we head back to the story. Let's see here. Zetman says, never have. Oh. Well, do you like role-playing games, Zetman? Brandon says, you're 20.5 hours into this game. You need 36 to 40 hours left to complete this game. The total hours to complete this game slash main story is 56 hours. But if you're aiming for story and everything else, it's a total of 81 hours. I'm guessing we're going to hit that 80 hour mark. And that's not even me like 
using a guide trying to find everything because I'm not using any guides to play this game. Uh, if people want to step in and they want to like tell me where a hidden item is or a mini game is or something along the way as we play, then yeah, I'll I'll do that. But I don't know where anything is. This is a blind playthrough. So I think we're going to hit that 80-hour mark just because I like to explore a lot and I like to take my time. Sometimes I go on little rants like I'm doing now. And um, that's probably going to stretch out the playtime. And Brandon says, and I'm doing good. I beat Marvel's Avengers and Doom 2016. And I'm working on Doom Eternal now. Oh, very nice, Brandon. Very nice. So there's the cafe door. That's where we're supposed to go. But if you go down this long bridge here, it takes you outside. And this is where I did my grinding. Uh, you will encounter mechs out here. So if you press L2 and R2 on your PlayStation controller, you automatically equip your mech. So that's very helpful. Now, let me pop in my earbuds so I can hear the game. And I want to show you what it is that I saw while grinding, what I want to investigate, and then we'll jump into the cafe and explore. Okay. So this is the lair. This is where we were. Um, you can see in the bottom right-hand corner is our mini-map. That yellow dot that we're standing next to is probably the base, the Bart's lair. The other two yellow dots, I'm guessing the yellow dot furthest to the right on the minimap is Dr. Seaton's Watchtower home. Um, and then the yellow dot sort of in between the Watchtower home and Bart's Lair is the desert town that we were at earlier. I really like the soundtrack. Now, if I rotate the map this way... And I've had a complaint with this game's map. Like, I don't want it. It aims down at the character, and I want it to aim like that. But if I stand here at the mountain, the cam does actually do what I want it to do. It aims out. And I think that's because it's not really so much... It's aiming at sort of out in the distance because of the fact that we're up. We're on a raised platform on a mountain. And so as we look out, you can kind of see there's what look to be two structures. There's a green hill with what looks like... It kind of looks like Dr. Seton's home because it looks like there's a huge telescope on top and that's how his house is set up. But I feel like that can't be it. Like it's, it would be way too far away. Like if you, again, if you look at the mini map, it looks like that's way in the distance. And beyond that, it looks like it's in the distance on the left. If you look at, uh, at the red vision cone, this looks a lot closer and it's to our right. So I don't know what that is. And then it looks like there's something directly in front of us. It could be another town. But we're not going to go investigate that right now. Um, just because I don't know if the game really wants us to go there right now. Maybe the game's going to send us there right afterwards. But uh, there is something else that I want to look at. And someone told me it's not a big thing. In fact, they told me it's not anything. But I still want to investigate anyway. Also, I've gotten a lot better at net combat in this game. Zero damage. Zero damage. Attack. Fuel 10. And Hurai Geki! I had missed saying Hurai Geki. That's like one of the most powerful spell cards. It used to be the most powerful spell card in Yu-Gi-Oh! Back in the, uh, the early days. The, uh, was it the Legend of Blue Eyes set, which was the first set in Yu-Gi-Oh! Ah, part of me misses that game. It was a great, uh, great card game. Started to lose interest once they uh, replaced the traditional format with the advanced format. And uh, ever since then, I just I wasn't as big into it. Twenty-two twenty XP, three hundred gold. Creepy asks, did you find the updog out here? There's an oh, the updog. He says, Magic the Gathering has a card that every bit of text on it can be summed up in one word. No. 
Oh, is that counter spell? I had a lot of those in my blue deck. Counter spell and rewind. People hated rewind. I thought it was completely unfair. Oh, there it is. So if you look around here, there's nothing but desert. There's some grass, like we're getting closer to the mountains. But out here, there's like one lone tree. And Wyatt was watching me grind some of this a while ago, and he's like, I don't think the tree actually stands for anything. And it might not. But it's weird to me that there's a tree here, and so I never got too close to it. Because I thought maybe, like, we'd hit a cutscene, or maybe this is, like, not a town, but maybe it's, like, a, a small area that you can explore on foot. And so I kept my distance. So I just want to see if it's anything. It doesn't appear to be. I'm going to hop out of the mech and, and walk around it. You can also see if we can somehow get across the water here. There's a cave entrance directly in front of us into that mountain. And as we rotate the camera, it looks like there's some sort of mountain in the middle of that water. So we have more areas to explore on that side. All right, let me hop out here. Oh, no. As soon as I hopped out of the mech, I got into a battle. That's not good. We'll try. We'll try to, to, to beat it, see what happens. Um, attack. I have access to my combos already? Okay. Zeno, that's true. I've actually forgotten how to fight as a normal person, because I've done so much mech grinding. If I survive this fight at all, it's just going to be because I've leveled up so much. Attack. One. It's not going to work. I'm dead. After they all attack... No, it's not going to... It's not going to work. Escape. If I even can escape. We did it. We got away. I thought I was going to have to restart the game for a moment there. Like, I just want to go touch the tree. Okay. So, I'm, I'm standing next to it. I'm pressing X. I can't interact with it in any way. So, let's get back in our mech. Let's get out of here. We'll go back to uh, the base, heal up, and then we'll... Um, We'll uh, go into the cafe and continue the story. There's spells that can't be countered now. See, I don't like that. Ah, Lorelei's here. Hello, Lorelei. Welcome. Thank you for shouting out Lorelei Creepy. How are you doing, Lorelei? And now with only one little guy left here, we can recharge our mech. Though I'm not really sure why I'm recharging, because as soon as I'm done, we're going to go back into the base anyway, but I find it hard to, to play unoptimized. I think I'm actually better at playing as the mech now than I am as just playing as 
buffet or playing outside of the mech, just because I've, I've been doing this so much. Another 300 gold. Back into Bart's lair. All right, so let's go through here, have ourselves a rest. This will regain us all of our HP. Let me rest. He says, I was just watching Columbo on Amazon Prime when you started streaming. I like Columbo. I like mysteries. Alright, now we should have full HP again. There we go. Nice. Um, let me go back into the menu. I, I think our gear is a little short, but I mean, I don't really care that much about... Yeah, it's only short by like well, it's short by HP, not just fuel. Alright, alright, alright. We'll make the run. I don't like the idea of going into combat without being like 100%. But I will make it quick. I will try. We have to go all the way back down to where we were before in the belly of the sand submarine. Back to the gear shop and then select refuel and then we can come back out. So it doesn't take that long to get there though. We're already back in the submarine. I forget which door is there. Okay, it's this one. This is the elevator. That takes us down. And then we run up here to the end of the walkway, or the hallway. Go outside. Well, it's not really outside, but out of the hallway. And we're back to where the gear shop is. I have learned to navigate this ship pretty well in my, my grinding time. Uh, tune up, fuel. Ten gold, yes. And there we go, back to full fuel and full HP. Alright, now let's go continue with the story. Doesn't he look a little like Luigi? He has all green on, he has like brown suspenders, he has a little symbol on his green hat. Are you talking about the chair I'm sitting in, or is that referencing something else? Oh, it's a Columbo reference, I got you. Columbo was famous for the, oh, just one more thing.
Hmm. He always compliments the suspect, talks about his wife, then one more thing, yeah. All right, here we go. Let's join the uh, Dr. Seton and Maizan. That's his name, Maizan. For some tea. This is the dining hall. I'm sorry to so gauche. Please take a seat. Perhaps you would like some of my famous tea? Master Fay, good doctor. Ah, oh, there's a little poor animation. That's cute. Young visitors are rare indeed. The young master must be very happy. If things were normal, we wouldn't be living in the desert, but rather back in the royal palace. Royal palace? You mean that young one is connected to the old Fatima dynasty? Pardon? No, I'm just a senile old fool who talks too much. Pay no attention to what I just said. <laughs> but that one-eyed youth does have a certain bearing. Oh, oh, oh! Well spoken, sir! Awfully good of you to notice. If I may... I would like to tell you. The young gent is the last forgotten reminder of the once proud Fatima dynasty. That is, before it was destroyed by Shakan's minions. Prince Bartholomew Fatima. Bartholomew? Ed bought the fourth successor? I am sure they announced Bartholomew died of an illness twelve years ago. Officially, yes. However, in reality, we rescued the young prince from Shakan's evil grasp. Then why must the prince, the rightful heir, resort to piracy? Since fleeing here, we have had only one wish. That the young master would grow up to be a great man. Not to reclaim the throne? That is correct. Of course, to say we have absolutely no desire to restore his rule would be a lie. We have plans for that as well. And part of those plans would include piracy? I would guess it would include military training. Or battle training. Well, yes. But there is a reason for that. Both Ava and Kislev are devoted to excavating the ruins. Each country's strength is increasing daily. Even if we could get the help of all our comrades to start a revolution, the combined strength of all of us would still not be enough. We would certainly be suppressed by Shakan's guards in no time at all. We needed power. We tried excavating the ruins using the Yggdrasil, but it didn't work as well as we expected.
excavating requires tremendous amounts of time, labor, and capital. The best we can do with our sand cruiser is find small items in the sand. And the piracy. Regardless of who gains the ruins technology, one thing is certain. Both Kislev and Abba will simply use that power to oppress the other. I agree with the young master's idea of creating a new power to balance things out a little. I see. It is far more effective to plunder from the shadows than to excavate the technology yourself. Of course, pillaging is an unpardonable act. However, for Ava, for Ignis, to continue like this, I'm sorry if it sounds rather self-righteous. That is something which outsiders like ourselves cannot comment upon. From what you have told me, I feel that the result of what you are doing will be good. Seeing your children here tells me that. I am much relieved by your words. Another cup of tea? Yes, please. Thank you. And then he uses the power of his mind to levitate the mug and sip the tea. You mentioned you had plans. What have you not... Why have you not put them into action? So that's a kind of a, a clever idea, like a, an interesting idea. So they don't have enough power <laughs> to really dig through the ruins and find more powerful equipment to, uh, to initiate their rebellion. So instead, they just let other people do the work of excavating, and then they just rob them. You put a Columbo meme in the Discord? Okay. That and his weird cigars. Yes, Columbo always had a cigar. You mentioned you had plans. Why have you not put them into action? With Miss Margie imprisoned, we dare not do anything. She would not happen to be Neeson's. You are well informed, my dear doctor. She is the great mother Marguerite of Nissan, and the young master's cousin as well. Why would Shakan take her captive? For the Fatima Jasper! The Fatima Jasper that is said to show where great treasure is? My good doctor, you do know an awful lot. I am most impressed. You do not like my tea, Master Fay? No, I'm just not thirsty now. Well, we have no idea what the great treasure actually is. But it is said to be strong enough to save our kingdom if it is ever in plight. And Marguerite has the jasper that tells the location? Only half of it, to be precise. The young master and Miss Marguerite each have half. Only by combining the two halves will anyone know where the treasure is. What exactly is the Fatima Jasper? When you say a half of the Jasper, I imagine some kind of necklace. Only the heirs to Ava and Nissan know what it really looks like. 
I'm going to guess the half that Bart has is maybe something he stores in his eye socket beneath his eye patch. Like a Jasper is a stone. I mean, they could be using that as a code, just mean treasure. But maybe it's like a like a a gemstone that's split in half, and maybe he wears he almost wears it like a fake eye beneath his eye patch. That would be a good hiding place. You always have it on you the entire time, so you never have to worry about anyone ransacking your your room or capturing your sand submarine and getting it that way. So uh, you always know where it is. And you're always able to protect it. <clears throat> I see. So that is why they have her locked up. My guess is that when they do find out, her chances of living are not... Ah, uh, I apologize. I simply... I mean... I was only supposing the worst case. So please do not take it to heart. No, that is a terribly realistic scenario. Ahem. What exactly do you mean by great treasure? Well, I haven't the foggiest. A gear! He means the gear! It has to be it! That's Bart again. Stylish man Bart. Young master, are the gears all right? Yeah. Even though they were sealed, sand's gotten into the joints. It's a pain in the neck to fix, so I'm having the crew take care of it now. My job is just to pilot them anyway. Besides, I'm bad with machines, so I just get in the way. Oh, sounds kind of like some of the racers from Initial D. They don't really know about cars, they just know how to drive them. Young Master. Anyway, what were we talking about? Whether the great treasure could be a... gear? Oh, yeah! You know, something like that is drawn in one of the Ava picture scrolls. Picture scrolls? Well, if you're interested, then let's go to the planning room. I'll show you what I mean, since you're my special guests. That sounds interesting. Wait, where are you going? In the shop, Pete. Master Fay, please relax. Oh, you're not gonna. Before, when he was on the Sand Summer, we could buy stuff from him to just increase our our character's power. Not our gear power, but our personal human power. But now he's not selling us anything. Maybe someone else in here will sell us something. Let's see. Do you know why such a small child is here? She is a war orphan. Aw. She was found crying in the desert. They brought her here in the Yggdrasil. We must stop the fighting for making, from making any more orphans like her. Ah. Hey, newcomer, where are you from? Lahan? Don't know it. Hey, I was a Kislev soldier. 
I didn't like the way they did things in the army, so they kicked me out. The young master's got lots of power and ambition, just like me. This guy was once an Ava soldier. You just can't predict destiny, can you? We used to fight each other, but now we're pals, sharing a meal together. How about that, eh? Speaking of food, I'm hungry. I thought it was him talking the whole time. Oh, that little noise here is the rumbling of the stomach. You from Ava? Oh, you're not. Well, I was an Ava soldier. Ava's Prime Minister, Shakan, has so much military clout that he can send us students off to war. I wasn't happy with Shakan. So I got out of the army and became a pirate. I wonder if Francoy is doing well at home. What? No! Yuck! She's not my girlfriend. She's my dog. Well now, aren't you Fay? Bart Deer said he made a big strong friend. Be friends with Bart. He's such a sweet child. Not interested. <laughs> ah, sure. I know. Oh, I know. I'm counting on you, Faye dear. Hey, Granny! Oh, that's it? I guess that's it. Me? I'm waiting for my dad to get back. But I'm not gonna cry. Pretty good, huh? That's really good. Aw. Welcome home, Daddy. There, there. Have you been a good girl by obeying the nice lady? Yes. I was good, so where are my presents? Presents? Look, here's a pirate dress-up kit. Oh, a pirate dress- I, I misread that at first. I thought he was- I thought he said, here's a pirate dress up my kilt. Like he just- <laughs> like he was wearing a kilt. And he just reached under it and went, Pwah! And just whipped it out. Like the pirate kit. I was like, whoa. It's like magic. <sighs> here's a pirate dress up kit. Wow! Thanks, Dad! Aww. Presents! Presents! Wee wee! I'm trying to talk to the guy now. There we go. Oops. I'm so embarrassed. But this is how I am with children. It's been a long time since we last had fun. Let's play in the sand! Dad, this is the desert! Wahahaha! You got a lot funnier since I saw you last. Well, see ya! Oh wow, if I didn't talk to him, he would've just stayed there. Alright, now you look like a shopkeeper. Can I buy something from you?
You look tired. Maybe shopping will perk you up. There we go. Even though they're Bart's friends, I have to charge them. That's fine. What do you want? You can buy everything from her? Well, that speeds it up. Including gear parts? Yeah! Wow! That's awesome! She is my one-stop shop! Oh, but she sells different stuff! Interesting. She only sells the Iron G-Whip. So the gear shop actually might sell better stuff. Let's look at the parts. No, all the same parts are here. Response circuit, defense circuit. I don't know what C circuit means. I mean, I know it increases agility in desert, but I don't know what C stands for. Circuit circuit. <laughs> magnetic coat. Lend, uh, magnetic coat increases response. Response circuit increases response. Defense circuit increases defense. C circuit increases agility in the desert. Magnetic coat increases response, but it does it better than the response circuit. Lens cover prevents camera damage. Engine guard protects the gear's engine. Tank guard stops fuel leaks and drainage. An AR repairer, like an, oh, that's an armor repairer, prevents loss of armor defense. And a motion guard prevents slow status. I don't own really any of this stuff. I don't some of it, but very few. Very little. If you want anything, just let me know. Uh, let's look at accessories. This is what I'm the most interested in. Bye. Now we have a party of three now. Interesting. So, we can buy power rings, attack value plus two. We own two of those. Or at least we have two of them stored. I thought we bought three originally. Maybe we sold one. Or maybe we're wearing one and we have two stored. I think that's what we're doing. Uh, stamina ring, defense value plus two. We have one stored. If I remember, I think Faye starts the game with a stamina ring. Speed ring, agility value plus one. Now that's tempting. Um, I don't really know how big a difference agility makes in this game. Uh, but again, the more agility we have, the more turns we get. Or the faster ATV gauge refills, so... I mean, I don't know if that would be worth it, though. Rip. Oh, thank you for the biddies, Creepy. Appreciate that. Thank you for the support. Guardian ring. Now that's weird. It says increases defense, but it doesn't tell me by how much. Stamina ring increases defense by two. Guardian ring, it doesn't say. I wonder why it doesn't say. I mean, I assume it's more than the stamina ring, because that's a difference of 150 gold versus 2,000 gold, but... Like, what exactly is the difference? Uh, so I guess I'm going to have to go into, like, a guide. And that's not really something I wanted to do, but... Maybe there's an item guide. Like, I don't want to walk through. I just want, like... Here we go. Well, it's an item fact, anyway. 
Um, event items, character equip lists. Weapon list, gear equipment, gear weapons. This has a list of the items and what they cost, but it doesn't say what they do. Well, there's two different lists here. Let me look at the other one. Creepy Redeemed Hydrate. Very well. Just a moment. Ah. Cheers, too creepy. See here. Uh... Oh, this one looks like it really in depth. Nice. Okay. Non battle items, event items, equipment list. Um, body equipment. Except oh, my goodness, it does the same thing. It gets super in-depth with, like, armor and weapons and the cost and where you can find them. And then it gets to accessories and it just doesn't say anything at all. It doesn't say their cost. It doesn't say their location. It doesn't say what they do. It's like, why would you would you leave out something? I mean, I understand weapons like armor are probably the most important thing. But, I don't know, maybe they just don't know the answer. That could be it, too. No, that can't be it, because when you go to equip an accessory, it tells you the difference it makes in your character. It's just, no one made a list of, like, what the accessories do. Well, the item facts didn't anyway. Let me see if there's another one in here. You know what? I'm just going to type it into a search engine. Guardian Ring Xenogears. Let's see what happens. Guardian Ring Xeno Gears. There we go. Lists are for rich people, boss. 